So this is where we get a little bit spicy right now. Because we're going to start early because I don't know how, how long I have you ladies, but I'm so grateful to have you ladies because this is going to be a learning moment for those who have a learning curve in regards to um, obtaining or acquiring the men that they desire, right? And today it's not going to be, we're not going to give any excuses. We're going to give the raw truth. Whether they choose to accept it is on them. We didn't say fact. We said truth. It's a big difference, right? Facts is backed by stats, and truth is an opinion, the perspective that you have on your own. So, Ali, can you give us the top three reasons why modern-day women cannot get married or find the lover that they desire? I can try. I can try. <laughs> if it's more, let me know. If it's more, let me know. Well, when I look at women who can't get married, I look at risk factors. There's a lot that goes statistically. I studied social work before I switched to anthropology. I was about one semester away from graduating. So you can basically see the outcome of someone's life a little bit. Not all people, but in general, like average is going to do what average does. Most people are average. That's just the name of the game. But you can see what leads them on these paths. So I'm going to say poor modeling is one reason. If you don't grow up in a traditional home, how are you even going to know what that's like? I have, I've had women in my family come to me and try to talk to me about the things I say. And they're like, well, I don't think you're right. You're really young. How would you know you're divorced? But then I'll turn to them and I'll say, well, what do you know about a healthy marriage? And it's straight up crickets and they're older than me, you know? So it's, uh, it's going to be poor modeling. Part of it can be intergenerational trauma. Sometimes the intergenerational trauma can be due to large superstructures, right? Um, I know that, that, uh, there's a lot more history that goes into that within the black community that I'm not going to touch on because that's not my business, right. but there's lots of overarching structures that can make somebody more likely to not be able to have a long-term relationship with another person. Um, and sometimes that's influenced by society. And I want to say <sighs> delusion, feminism, not planning. Those are some big ones. Do you want me to talk about all of that? Yeah, absolutely. You said delusionism, delusionism feminism, Del which we all agree with, and Lack of planning. Lack of planning, right. So the delusion is, is that women think they have a lot of time and they get a lot of attention and they don't get criticized. To criticize a woman is to hurt her feelings. And that is not really what we're allowed to do in the West right now, even if it's for her benefit. Because you, as a woman, you could have two kids with a meth head and your girlfriend, it's a 50-50 shot. She's going to say something to you about your decisions. 50-50. Women are really uncomfortable with hurting other people's feelings. That's why you can see that there are some obese children because women can't withhold <laughs> food from their kids, right? I mean, that's that's uh, one thing. So women aren't getting honest feedback. It feeds into this sense of delusion that they're going to have all this time in the world. Okay. So then we'll get a little bit more into feminism. Women are confused. They think that they're empowered by feminism, by being single by default. Being single by default is different than being single by choice. If you out here looking like Jen and you single, you know, you got some options. But if you're not going to be that quality of person, those options don't exist. They're, they're gone. And these women don't find out. Um, the last piece is going to be the lack of planning because every woman, when you ask them when they're in their 20s, you want to get married, they're like, oh, no. If you were to look at them in their face and say, when you are 60, do you want to be married? Who do you want to be around you? Do you want there to be children? A lot of them are going to tell you yes, but they don't know that they're already missing the bus. Wow. That's everything I got. Wow. No, that, no we're going we're gonna to unpack that because that was really good. So let me get it right. Poor modeling, basically non-traditional family structures, intergenerational trauma, um, delusion, because we don't, women don't actually critique each other properly or, or give the right advice for judgment, um, feminism, and the last but not least, planning, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the woman who want to get married. And we know, Jen, not every woman wants to get married. No. Mm -hmm. Right? So, Jen, let's work backwards. Okay. Let's all three of us work backwards. Okay. Planning. How does planning truly affect the outcome of women being married? whether they want to or they don't want to. Because some people don't plan to have kids. Some people don't plan to get married. Sometimes it ends up like that, right? I know people that live in New York that live together because they have to pay rent. They don't really love each other at all. They just, we, 
this is how it is, right? right? How does planning have, what's the what's the impact on planning in regards to acquiring a lover or being married? I, I'm going to try to suspend disbelief. I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm um, the, the, a great person for the subject, I'm gonna be honest, because I'm not one of those women that's pining or the end goal is marriage or children, right? I'm not that woman, the majority of women are, right? So it's like, well, this is why I don't know. The short answer to me, why not only women, but men don't find who it is they want is because they're constantly looking for something they want instead of being what they want. That's the short answer. People are so hell bent and focused on, I want a person with this, he has to have this. She has to de- she has to bring this to the table. He has all the while they're fucked up. Right. right? They have unresolved issues. They're insecure. They have low self-esteem. They're not financially where they want to be. They're not aesthetically where they want to be, but they're constantly projecting what they want on someone else. People don't find who it is they want because they're not even who it is they want. Because let me tell you something. If you are hecha y derecha, if you <laughs> If you look good, feel good, smell good, if you love your job, if you are financially stable, there is no way on earth that you will not find a mate. Mm. There's no way on earth. So please save the, well, I have a degree and, and I get paid this amount at work and I have a Mercedes Benz, but how do you feel about yourself and what are your aesthetics like? Mm-hmm. So that I have to say where people are like, but I have everything going on. I'm making $90,000 a year. I have a Mercedes. I have a car. You know, I have my own house. No. What do you feel like inside? What's your personality like? What's your sense of humor like? What's your religion like? That's why you're not finding somebody regardless of of how much you've accumulated. Mm -hmm. So my short answer would be people don't find people because they don't even know who they are. And then they project that onto the world. If I don't know who I am or I don't feel you know, uh, attractive, Mm -hmm. what business do I have looking for someone else? If I'm not 100% complete here, what business do I have looking for a husband because my biological clock is ticking? Wow, you know what's funny? That is so, that's the the irony. You can't find who you want because you're lost. Yeah, it's like- crazy. There's a lot of talk about like, oh, well, you you can't get a woman because of X, Y, and Z. And you can't get a man because of X, Y, and Z. No, it's because, because you're not whole. Right. You're going out there looking for something to complete these holes. And that's why you don't find somebody. Because again, if you are physically fit, you feel attractive, whatever your attractive is, whatever your level of attractive is, you're financially stable, you are genuinely a happy person mm-hmm. and sound, there's no way that people are going to ignore that energy. There's mm-hmm. no way. So Ali, um, let's, let's, it's time for a little bit pushback. Um, I love what your fiance said. He said, I had, he said, men build yourself. Mm-hmm. And the woman, kind of like what Jen said, build yourself and the woman's going to come to you. But Jen is saying also woman build yourself and the man's going to come to you. So it goes both ways. So a little pushback to Ali, um, not pushback, but if you want to have pushback for Jen, um, why is the onus on men to build themselves and not women? If you're talking, so you're talking to me. The question is for me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Why is there onus on men? Because men make the rules about what men have to be, who they have to be, what they have to accomplish. Men have a burden of performance. When you think about the worst thing you can be in society, you don't think about being a homeless woman. You think about being a homeless man. Well, why is that? <laughs> Right, right. It's a burden of performance. Right. So I think that's just tale as old as time. I agree. Build yourself up as a as a man, but professionally, so you can have some options. Because if you're performing below average, let's be real, your options for wives. I mean, most men don't even want average women. It's a 50-50 shot that a woman's obese in America right now. Like, let's be real. Okay. So right. that's why you gotta right. build yourself up. But at the same time, I think when women think about building themselves up, they get that's where they get confused. Um I talk about that women want four things usually. They want the husband, the kids, the job, and the body. Well, if you want all these things, you will not be getting any sleep. So what can you realistically have? So then women choose, okay, well, I want everything else. Forget the body. There's always going to be choices in life that incur consequences. Mm -hmm. So when women are choosing their path on how to build themselves up, it's like, No. What if you found a passion of fitness? What if you found a passion and a hobby? What if you really threw yourself into your feminine delights, your feminine talents, your feminine treats, instead of trying to go and be a hard charging man? 
Mm. I think just have conversations with yourself on who you are and who you want to be as a woman and gear yourself toward that. If you're a non-traditional woman, fine, but have fun living your life. Mm. Okay. I I definitely took from that the burden of performance because I know me and my friends, I'm a graduate of Columbia University. Um, my second master's, first master's from Boston College, a bachelor's uh, from Boston College. And one of the things, my friends are all bankers. I'm, I'm the one that took the odd way around things, right? And they always say to me, Hey Mo, I didn't work this hard for that type of woman. What are we doing here? Like when we go to spots like new, like restaurants or bars, I didn't work this hard for women. Like I think men do, we do work hard for options to have certain type of women that come into our lives. We work hard for that. And I think women know that, right? I think a woman, I think for me, here's a disconnect. You could work as hard as you want as a woman. You can get all the degrees you want, want. you can make all the money you want but you won't, you, it won't increase your chances of getting the man you want. But for men, if we do that, it increases our chances to get the woman we want. It really does. Like we learned that at a young age, like get money and you have a better chance of getting that girl you want. I don't know, what do you think about that, Jen? Um, you know, you spoke about the burden of performance. Well, heavy hangs the head that wears the crown. You guys want to run the planet? You want to <laughs> I love this honesty. And right. then you put yourself in position to do that. Men right. are, you know what I mean, raised that way. Just like women are raised to be feminine and, you know what I mean, subservient and keep your legs closed. And, you know, men are raised that way. So you want to run the house. You want to be HOH. You want to run the, then you go out there and perform and make yourself 100%. Women don't have to, you know, perform at that level to get married and be happy and, and have a rich man. And that's just how life is. And I want to I want to there's a disclaimer real quick, because I, I noticed the ladies get um, for some reason, these are these are trigger topics for them. Um, you don't have to know how to cook. You don't have to serve a man to be a whole woman. You guys get triggered by it. You have to learn to take the charge out of conversations. OK, so I see a lot of, oh, I cook today. I deserve a cookie or, oh, yeah, here we go. It's like you have to take the charge out of conversations. And if it bothers you that much, then change some of the things that you do. So you are that woman. I don't get the charge of why people get upset about these conversations. We're just talking about our experiences. I'm, what I'm saying is not gospel. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with a woman that just wants to be a homemaker, raise her children and cook for her man. If that makes her happy and that's what her husband wants, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that woman. If you're not that woman, I guarantee you can find yourself a man who doesn't care if you have other things going on. But ladies, we have to take the charge out of these conversations because it's silly. Everything is not a shot at you. You know what I mean? We could just we, we're just having a conversation. I also wanted to say to Glow, because she brings this up a lot, and it is true. If there was no man in the house when you were being raised, then how do you learn about serving? The only thing I have is a little pushback because my grandmother, uh, we were raised with her, and she never had a husband. My grandmother still taught us to be subservient. So you don't need a man in the house to, to teach a little girl that you should serve a man. He is the king of the house. It's just cultural. It's tradition. Right. I saw my mother do it, but my grandmother was like that, and there was no grandfather. You know what I mean? So that, that's just, you don't need a man in a house to teach a, to teach a woman to respect the man and serve a man and cook for a man. You don't need a husband in the house for that. But I do understand that, you know, if you didn't experience that, then you right. probably didn't see it. But your mother still could have, I'm saying in general, not your mother glow, but your mom can still teach you, listen, this is how you behave right. in the presence of a man, especially when that man is yours, right? I just wanted to put that out there. Like we don't, we're, we're not throwing shots at anybody. These are our experiences right. and it's just okay to listen and be like, okay, well, whatever. That's not me. I'm not cooking for a man and you have every right. 